Today, we're going to talk about SQL Server saved configuration files, but we're going to do it a little bit different way. Uh, so as you guys know, I, with my previous post, I'm launching new business, custombots.ai. So I've been playing around with AI quite a bit. And I thought, hey, you know, what if I uh, tried to mix things up a little bit and instead of showing some, you know, a, a few slides and presenting the idea, maybe feed the, the content to something that might be a little more visual appealing. So that's what I did. And I really appreciate it if you guys let me know, you know, what you prefer. Do you prefer the, the old style uh, slides and I just go through and talk or maybe something that gives you a little more dynamic uh, visualization of, uh, of the ideas. So uh, enjoy the video and please uh, let me know how you liked it. And with that, we'll cut over. Today, I'm going to show you a neat trick to make SQL Server installations a breeze. Ever wished you could save your installation settings for later? Well, guess what? You can with saved configuration files. Installing SQL Server is a task packed with options and settings which can eat up your time, especially when deploying multiple instances. But, wouldn't it be cool you could just record your choices for later? That's what these configuration files do. They keep your preferences safe, turning follow-up installations into child's play. Creating a save configuration file is a really simple process. During the typical installation process, you make your desired selections. When you land on the Ready to Install page, you'll notice a path to a file called Configuration File 8i and i and i. Before you hit Install, make sure to copy this file and keep it in a safe place. Now that you've got your configuration file saved, it's time to put it to work. For your next SQL Server installation, initiate the setup with a command line argument that points to your save configuration file. This action will pre-populate your preferred settings, leaving only a handful of options to check. It's a massive time saver, particularly when deploying multiple instances. To optimize your use of save configuration files, here are a few tips. First, always review your save configuration file before using it for a new installation. This ensures it aligns with your current needs. Second, store your configuration files in a secure location. This step is crucial to prevent unauthorized access. Lastly, don't hesitate to use comments within the file. This can help you document any changes or specific choices, keeping your process transparent and easy to follow. In a nutshell, save configuration files are an invaluable tool for SQL Server installations. They not only save time, but also bring consistency to your installation process. So there you have it, a comprehensive guide on how to create and use save configuration files in SQL Server. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more insightful tips. And of course, hit that bell icon to stay updated on our latest content. If you have any questions or personal experiences to share, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks. I appreciate you taking the time to watch.